Ubuntu 25.4 launches with host of new features. We also have some update issues, news about the new Linux Mint LMDE version. And we also have some very spicy news with Thunderbird uh, because we are getting Thunderbird Pro services. Also about the new Fedora 42 version and their new installer and also about MX Linux 23.6. My name is Jean from Linux Ort and we come to the first news with Ubuntu 25.4. Dot four. This is the latest interim release. We also published a video about Ubuntu 25.4 on our YouTube channel. And just have a look into this video if you want more detailed news what actually has changed. But it brings in newer software versions like Python 3.13. Also a bunch of other applications which are newer like LibreOffice 25.2. But it also introduces the GNOME Desktop 48 with the a new PDF viewer called Papers. It is replacing events and also we are getting with Ubuntu 25.4 a new well-being feature which also comes from GNOME where you can see your screen time. How many hours have you been on the computer today and after how many hours the display should turn black and white for example to notify you hey it's enough for today. <laughs> I guess many of us could need the this, but uh, we will have a look how this will be used in the future. It's kind of the first appearance of such a feature in the Linux desktop market. So I'm very curious how you like this. Just write it me into the comments if you want. And there is also an improved installer, of course, uh, with special dual boot setups. And they are also now enabling hardware based encryption for your partitions. But we also got some update problems. Shortly after the release of Ubuntu 25.4, the upgrade path from 24.10, so the interim release before, was temporarily halted because users attempting the upgrade, particularly those using the Kubuntu flavor, which comes with the KDE desktop, uh, reported broken desktop environments like you see it here. The developers though acknowledged the issue but didn't expect that so many users will have this problem. So they paused the upgrade for all flavors while they are investigating and preparing fixes. So this is again very bad for Ubuntu I would say because we saw this also on the LTS upgrade from 22.4 to 24.4. There were also many issues. So yeah, they definitely have to get their quality assurance up which is indeed very hard for so many Linux desktops, for so many hardware devices, for so many computer configurations, even Windows updates are very balked sometimes. So not too much to blame canonically here, but I wonder that for example, Linux Mint doesn't had such hard issues in the past. But to be honest, um, the Linux Mint update is only done by a bit more experienced users because Linux Mint is not displaying all users. Hey, you could just upgrade with a single button. They have to read an documentation how to do that. Then the process is kind of automated because of hiding such a very simple button. They are not letting too many users run in such specific problems. I'm very curious if maybe also someone of you was affected by this upgrade issue. But again, I only recommend these interim updates for only very experienced users and I not do recommend this for production use unless you know what you are really doing. So this is it for Ubuntu 25.4 and let's get to the news about Linux Mint. Yeah, we are getting some regex support in also our file name search here. Very, very cool, but a very niche feature, so to say. And I guess many of us won't use that once a time. But also the Linux Mint team announced that the upcoming LMDE 7 version, which will be based on the next stable version of Debian 13, which will be out in this summer, will include full support for OEM installations like the Ubuntu version before. But now it's also getting to the LMDE versions, which is really, really great. So this OEM support means that the manufacturer of a hardware device can install Linux Mint, install some drivers like such things, and then can shut down the computer and set it into the deliver 
delivery mode when the next time the computer starts the user only has to adjust its user accounts language and this is it very very easy this move has also sparked a discussion about whether linux mint might be preparing lmde as a more prominent option alongside its main ubuntu based edition if we head over to download we only see the linux mint 22.1 version so this is the ubuntu based version not the lmde version overall i would be also kind of happy if they change that and if they for example bring a new edition down here or next to the main cinnamon edition in parenthesis just to make it more prominent because um, if you want to get lmde 6 you have to hover above download and then switch here to lmde 6 and then we see an alternative to ubuntu the debian edition of linux mint honestly i don't think that for many users lmde 6 is a great alternative at the current moment of time because um, the linux mint team is stitching out all kind of bad features of the ubuntu base and they kind of use a very yeah basic ubuntu image not with too much changes like for example snap in particular um, so i would say at the current moment of time cinnamon should be also okay for all of you i also made a video about this linux mint ubuntu or lmde just have a look for it then you get a more detailed answer about this. Let's come to Thunderbird. Thunderbird is planning paid services with Thunderbird Pro. These include for one Thunder Mail it is called. So an email and calendar hosting service. Very very cool. So they also want to become kind of an email provider and especially calendar sync host and something like this. And also Ubuntu Pro which is another version of Thunderbird with professional support and potentially extra features but they are currently in beta and i'm very curious how this will end we also get a thunderbird send for example which we already had with mozilla send some years ago this was a great feature many uh, people used just to send a file very easily to another person but this was too expensive for mozilla because of that they turned it down but now it will come back with this thunderbird pro offering and also kind of yeah thunderbird assist which will be AI. Yeah, let's see. I would say this is kind of okay. Such services also Thunderbird appointment for betting meeting planner maybe like this. For me, it's very important that Thunderbird, the base email app as we know it today, will always be free. I hope they stick to this promise. If they are sticking to this promise, these Thunderbird Pro services are, in my opinion, very good options for also some more professional users or more professional companies who want to get very into Thunderbird but also already now many companies are already using Thunderbird so this is completely okay here but if you want now or in the future then you have the option to do such services which will help to fund the Thunderbird development itself. I consider as completely okay and as a completely valid point and if there are users who want especially use such software, then it's completely fine. Go ahead. And I'm very curious how this will turn out in the future and if this maybe will also secure the development of Thunderbird for many more years. And then, yeah, this is okay because every developer also has to pay their bills in the end of a month. Also, the Thunderbird developers. What are you thinking about this? Just let it me know in the comments. And we come to the next news. And this is Fedora 42. Yeah, we also got a major new version of Fedora Linux. One of the key highlights is the new Anaconda installer. Here we see the Anaconda web UI. Um, yeah, it's a complete web app. Very, very cool. The old installer was kind of messy and also not really intuitive for many users. So I would say this will be great news for the future. And also we see that many developers of Linux are switching to the web-based versions of many apps. Also we see it, for example, with Ubuntu, they are switching with Yast to 
also to a web-based version or they want to switch better to say but canonical isn't doing this step they already did this step with um, their unity desktop maybe and some apps in this but now they are tending to use Flutter, also a very cool framework. I'm also using um, myself for my apps. For example, the Linux Assistant is developed with Flutter. And uh, this is also a very cool and very nice toolkit. But yeah, Fedora switched to a web-based solution. I guess this is completely fine. And also if we have a look to the outside of Linux, then we see, I guess, almost every second app which will be released is written in a web-based language and in a web-based framework because HTML5, JavaScript and CSS are a great combination for almost everything. So yeah, now we see the next generation maybe of Linux software won't be GTK anymore. Maybe it will be more and more web-based. For me, this will be okay. But then we also see the differences and the draw-offs we have. For example, accessibility support, changing the icons and so on. Abroad, all applications will be more and more difficult in the future. So yeah, maybe this icon theme thing will be more of a relict in the future maybe or won't get the high attention as it got it maybe in the last 10 years. But yeah, let's see what you are thinking about this, that many Linux distributions now tend to switch to web-based applications. Let me know it. Maybe in the end also Fedora got a new spin, which is called Cosmic Desktop Environment. Of course, the new desktop of Pop! OS, very, very cool. Also more integration for Windows support. Also a thing the normal Linux user won't be recognizing at all, to be honest. This is it for Fedora and let us come to MX Linux 23.6. Just a small new point release of MX Linux. It's based on Debian 12.10 update. We get newer packages and refinements from Debian stable, so perfect. And also they are more and more taking down systemd and they are offering SysVinit as an alternative to systemd. Not too many disputes which are ditching out or try to ditch out systemd. I would say at the time systemd has become kind of yeah, the standard inside our Linux space when it comes to services, booting and such things. And honestly, I'm only using Linux since 2013. So I just yeah, kind of grew up with the systemd funk. <laughs> um, and yeah, for me as a user, it's complete okay. But what are you thinking about systemd? And of course, also about distributions which want to ditch out many systemd functionality. Just write it me into the comments. And uh, with this, we are finished for this week. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. See you in the next one. Bye.